it every was, week. Uh, it was great. It was Invincible. I watched Invincible. We were just talking, me and Steve, before the show. I loved it. Um, really excited for season two and three now that they got picked up for that. I got the first shot of my vaccine, and I'm feeling good. My arm is kind of hurting a little bit, but, like, I'm okay. I, ha- I haven't developed superpowers yet. Hopefully uh, after the second shot, are you 5G? that'll kick in. I think I'm 5G yeah, ready. Yeah. I think I'm all good there. Perfect. Um, but maybe on the second shot will be, like, you know, like I'll feel it uh, coursing through my veins. But yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm okay. Jokes aside, and uh, I recommend anybody out there, like go get it if you can, if you'd like to. You know, it's keep people around you safe, keep yourself safe. So yeah, that's what I did this weekend. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I just sat around and ate lots of cake. Um, so definitely you had. That doesn't more... sound bad. No, I mean, it sounds it like is... a good weekend. It to is... be honest, <laughs> I had like four different types of cake. It's like ridiculous but delicious at the same time <laughs> <laughs> steve Mullick, how about you guys how was your weekend that was great it was nice and relaxing tried to take a couple walks but uh the weather said otherwise yeah so you know i listened and i stayed inside <laughs> <laughs> it was good uh lots of valorant um i binged yasuke uh if you guys haven't watched it go watch like even if you don't like anime it is like one of the best shows that i've seen in a long time it's so good it's so good it's so the music is amazing it's okay. the animation style it's right. look i know you guys are big marvel fans i'm a big anime fan boy all right yo, I love it, just, anime. It, it ties to my it, heartstrings yo i love anime i think i watched yasuke it's it's good um oh it's, just it's good no, Afro Just Samurai good. and oh, that's, okay, fair enough. No, it's nothing will ever compare to Afro Samurai. But I will say that it did tie on a lot of cultural things yes. that Afro Samurai couldn't uh, get into. Um, but you know, just lots of Valorant as always. The regional finals just took place, and yeah, staying inside because I have the reverse problem. It's a hundred plus degrees here already, so <laughs> you know, I don't like sweating. True. <laughs> no sweating. So just. Sweat your anime muscles. There you go. Yeah. There, there we go. go. That's good. Okay. All right. It, I got it. Yeah. It's good. So I will never mention it again. Um, thanks. All right. <laughs> Did you say thanks, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> All right, today we're going to be talking, obviously, lots of gaming, although we could probably talk Marvel and anime um, all day. We're not going to do that today. Well, maybe a little bit. We're going to be talking about (laughs) PlayStation State of Play, also um, their latest news uh, with Discord. We're going to be talking about Activision and their acquirement of toys for bob i'm making up words today and marvel fighting game rumors as well as a returnal deep dive as steve's going to be giving us his impressions so now that you know what we're talking about make sure you get all your thoughts in order and let us know in the chat what you think on these topics i'm just gonna get started uh with the state of play did anyone watch anyone yeah yeah okay i was watching i thought it was gonna be more than just ratchet and clank but Mm. i guess like i was that's my fault. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not <laughs> complaining that it was just Ratchet and Clank. Like, I, sure. I mean, that is your fault because PlayStation yeah. was very clear. Yeah. On they said expectations. What the state of play would be. They okay. said that the state of play is going to be a couple indie games and a lot of Ratchet and Clank. And we mm. literally got two indie games. <laughs> In like almost 20 minutes of Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, I mean, if you're looking to get like a sneak peek of God of War, like something, a teaser, get that excitement. This was not the state of play no. for yeah. you. But it was still a good one. Um, they showed off Subnautica, uh, which I've never played Subnautica. Really? <laughs> the first one, but the, they came out with this sequel. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Malik. No, I was going to say, it's anxiety-inducing. That mm, game Kendra, is yeah. stressful. Ah, uh, really? It's, yeah, it's because you're under, I mean, I'm not a big, I like the ocean, but like that whole underwater scenario, like it's, the game is so peaceful Mm -hmm. for like the first hour, maybe two hours. And then like all you see is giant sea monsters and things that want to kill you. And you got to manage all these resources, not to mention you're just like deep underwater. Um, I, that game is so much fun though. It's a, it's a fun like game to just kind of play on your own and relax, but also like kind of grind out, you know, but 
but you know i've been excited for this dlc because we've seen streamers play previews of it um yeah. so it's been kind of kind of interesting yeah, well, of course, this is Subnautica, uh, Subnautica Below Zero, and uh, it's going to be like a more, well, Arctic environment. Mm -hmm. So the thing that really surprised me from this trailer, because I heard people talking about how Subnautica has kind of these jump scare, like, uh, elements. Ish, yeah, yeah. I was freaking out when um, they go into the hall. I wonder if it's going to play right now on the trailer, but if they when they went into the hall for this trailer and then on the right side this huge monster just appears and that kind of is making me not want to play Subnautica even more because it, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that much of a jump scare I thought it would be like oh you know like a fish floats by and you didn't expect it um but no, no this is actually That's, it's not that type of game no, no it's not, not that, that cute. type of game it's not that cute uh, but it is going to be using the haptic feedback as well as the adaptive triggers which i feel like for a game that's based on exploration mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense for something like subnautica Mm. Absolutely. And I think, too, it's like, I mean, Steve, you're probably going to talk about this when we get to Returnal, but like haptic right. feedback is not only something that we need developers to experiment with, it's something that we need gamers to just try. Because sure. this is developers trying to create a more immersive experience. And I don't want to say in like a low budget way, because I think a lot of people think of immersive gaming almost as like VR and expensive peripherals and things like right. that. This is a, a more accessible way to create a more immersive level of gaming overall. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's also very subtle. Like, unless you know what's happening and it's, and unless it's so um, in your face about it, like, you don't even really notice it until your mind clicks in and then you're like, oh, this has been happening for hours? Yeah. This is next right. level. And yeah, it does really um, immerse you into the game. And it's also very different from Rumble too, right? Where yeah. Rumble is kind of just like this blanket thing that happens across all games, whereas haptic feedback, they change it up in very subtle ways. If, mm -hmm. if there's a it's comparison cool. for people who haven't experienced it on, you know, the PS5, I would compare it to the HD Rumble with Nintendo, specifically yes. one to switch, I think did a really great job of showing the complete ability of 3D Rumble. Is that, is that what they call that? 3D rumble? Yeah. 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 Um, no, the balls, the marbles, when you have to guess oh, yes. the amount of marbles in your Joy-Con, that's crazy. That, that was, blew yeah, my yeah. mind um, because I'm like, how'd they, f like, when did the balls get in there? Um, they're never in there. <laughs> it's just the rumble. It's so mad like, big. But that's really cool. And I think it works really well. When the PlayStation 5 came, first came out and, you know, adaptive triggers, um, was like all the rage because people were like, oh, this is really cool. And the haptic feedback, you really didn't get a sense of that um, mm -hmm. because it was really Miles Morales you would play this game for uh, on PlayStation 5, um, but it wasn't made for PlayStation 5. Right. When you got yeah. into Cold War, you really got a sense, I felt, of how haptic feedback works, adaptive triggers, but it just wasn't the proper environment to want that type of feedback unless you were playing the story um and yeah, even then right. you know it could be iffy depending on what type of gamer you are something mm -hmm. like this for subnautica i think it makes sense mm -hmm. um so i i'm interested in that at least and that um how they're going to utilize that to hopefully its full capability of course because it's not necessarily um a dlc that was built for playstation 5 i don't think we'll get that um, extravagant haptic feedback and adaptive trigger, but I'm still hopeful. I think there's a lot of opportunities they, they could go about it with this one. Um, so, yeah. you know, for you guys at home, uh, Subnautica Below Zero releases on May 14th for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. So um, that's going to be exciting if that's your thing. Are you guys planning I'll, on trying it out? Uh, I just wanted to quickly point out mm -hmm. that uh, the original gets a free update to yes. PS5 as well for people who have purchased it. Yes, that's right. Uh, they yeah, get a free, free update as well. Also, so yeah, uh, you could test we missed, it out. We missed something very important at the beginning of the show. I want, I'm not. <gasps> it's, I wanted it's to May go the Fourth Eve. Oh, it's May Fourth Eve. Oh, okay. Oh, May the Fourth be with you. Oh, I thought you I were sorry, talking you just, about the I beginning just, like, of the State of Play show. I'm like, I'm not. There. No, no, no. I'm to. It's because we're not going to be around tomorrow. So happy May the Fourth, everybody. Oh, and to you. That's true. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully uh, the Force 
will be with us all day today. I know I was the trying fourth. to do it, but then I just—it's uh, cheesy. I can't do. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's sorry, okay. Camille. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. Um, so pretty much the state of play continued. We got our first indie, and our second indie was—I feel like a very interesting choice. It was this. Um, Among Us is coming to the PlayStation. Yeah, uh, which is crazy. Because I just want the skins. Obviously, you see there that right. you get a Ratchet and Clank skin. Um, they're not giving much more information on that. This was literally a 30-second trailer. <laughs> um, but how do you guys feel about Among Us coming to the PlayStation? Is this the right move? Are we over Among Us? What are you guys thinking? I mean, it's the right move, but, like, damn, it's uh, it's been a while. This game, I mean, like... Listen, there's just no way around it. Like the game is, of course, a massive success and it's this complete anomaly of a game in that the success it reached was two years after its initial launch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like it just kind of became a sleeper hit. No, it like ended up becoming one of the biggest games in the world at the time. But the problem was and this was this is the problem even a game like Fall Guys faced, right? Where everyone's into it everyone's playing it mm -hmm. and now the pressure's on to get some new content into the game yeah. and i think by the time that they added that new map like everyone's still playing casually and there's still like a decent amount of people playing the game but it's just to the point where nobody's into it as hardcore as they were a couple of months ago and so they've really taken a minute on releasing that new map and getting it on playstation is always good like you're just getting it in more people's hands but are there that many people still playing is this like is this end up being a deal that isn't like that great for sony i mean then again i'm i'd have to imagine they probably didn't end up paying that much for it but i don't yeah. know it's just uh it's interesting to see yeah and you kind of you kind of hit it on the head too caboose because i mean it's one it's a little bit too late but then two like if they would have released this when the ps5 first launched and while you yeah. were waiting you could do some yeah. sort of window in window play an among us game with your friends or like incorporate it into party chat somehow that would have been great but yeah now just adding it just saying it's coming to playstation 5 it doesn't feel like the right place for it either like switch would make sense for yes. me if the mm. psp was still around sure but i don't know if you know the playstation 5 is where it's really going to find second life or third life i guess well, what if it's <laughs> yeah. free what What's if it's that? free on playstation now is it uh is it planned to be free or is there they're anything not giving like any no details yeah. on exactly how this is releasing if there'll be any other skins that are like playstation inspired that will also mm. come along um if you download it on the ps4 or 5 um mm. but i'm just putting it out there will this be the right move then if it's free on you know the streaming service or that service that they're expecting to be the competitor to game pass yeah um I I mean, like, if they do something where they make it free, then that could be great and more people playing it again. But that, I guess, is up to the to the developers, right. you know, and I'd imagine like maybe there that is part of the deal. Like I could see that happening, but it is really it's up to the developers if they think that the game is kind of not necessarily in trouble, but in need of a resurgence that bad. Mm -hmm. I, th yeah. I think either way, it's a good thing for the game. I think if it's free or if people have to pay for it, it's only going to incentivize people who don't play games on mobile or on PC just to jump in and at least try it. Yeah. But yeah, Caboose, you even talked about it. With games like this, Fall Guys, there's, you're always racing against the zeitgeist, right? You're right. racing for the to get away from that finish line that's that's relevancy and this kind of reminds me of when PUBG came to xbox mm. everyone was super mm. jazzed about it and as soon as it landed everyone's like eh i'll go to yeah. i'll go play fortnite now yeah, yeah. and that's kind exactly. of what i worry about and the same thing with fall guys just aside like even last week fall guys announced that the uh console release on xbox has been delayed uh further into the summer it's like okay well now you're risking that the same thing as among us where it's going to come out. People are going to jump on it for the first week, have fun, upload their screenshots and everything on, on social media, and then play something else. So yeah. I wonder, the, the Ratchet and Clank stuff is really cool just to get people in. I, again, it's that social thing of picking up the new skin and all that. But I do wonder what's the longevity of it on PlayStation. 
And you brought up an interesting point because I feel like with party games, um, there is that relevancy, that expiry date that seems to tie in with party games because there's such a trend of a moment, right? Um, Another party game that I thought we were kind of done with Mario Party. Yes. And then randomly, (laughs) Nintendo's like, by the way, online is here. Um, So I feel like, you know, with the right moves, there could be that resurgence. Mm -hmm. If PlayStation's like, we're going to offer this free for people. And I think for the developers where, you know, they will reap the reward of that um, would be people paying for skins. People like when I first played Among Us, I had to have a little guy with me in a little space like (laughs) helmet just because it was so adorable. And I usually don't pay for like any cosmetics, but because of the simplicity, simplicity, sorry, for Among Us, I just wanted to stand out a little bit more than everyone else. So I got my little guy. I paid my little, I think it was like, it was, it was actually, I think it was a bit, I think it was like five bucks um, (laughs) for my little guy. But I was I was happy. So I could totally see people paying for this. And I could mm-hmm. see Among Us being like, okay, this this is making sense for this partnership, um, for us being on this console. And hopefully with like depending on how deep this this relationship between the developers and PlayStation is, maybe there could be maps. Like the PlayStation could really support mm-hmm. them with releasing more maps frequently. It's it's tough that the game is like like Among Us is so subtly like violent because I imagine like they could even do something like a Spider-Man skin for Among Us. And I mean, yeah, I mean, Kratos could work. That could absolutely work. But I mean, imagine like a Spider-Man skin like that would that would sell like people would want to buy stuff like that. Um, Like Ratchet and Clank, I think, is a a, a big franchise and it's cool. But I don't know how many people are like lining up out the door to get the new Ratchet and Clank skin for Among Us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Has Among Us right. done com- any? Sorry, go ahead, Malik. No, I was just gonna say. So you you bring up something really interesting. It was just like just at the end you had mentioned like PlayStation now rivaling Xbox Game Pass. The more that I think about it. I think the PlayStation Now is going to be less Xbox Game Pass and more HBO Max. It's going to be this exclusive either yeah. preview or this exclusive access to these premium games that you literally cannot get anywhere else. Because as we start to think about Returnal and Ratchet and & Clank and even Subnautica, we're starting to get this idea of like a PlayStation game beyond just being a story-driven, you know what I mean, almost sometimes, a lot of times, third-person action game. And and I think that if PlayStation can kind of start getting games that are purely built like to be the best on their system without having to, you know, make other versions suffer, I think that's where PlayStation is going to shine. And PlayStation now as a premium service instead of just an everybody service is probably the best marketing decision for them because can they yeah. really compete with Game Pass? Like at the point that it's at now, can they still really compete and be successful? Mm hmm. Yeah, and just to clarify um, for uh, Nike, Nike, I like to say Nike, um, in in chat, we're talking about the fact that what PlayStation or now could become, um, not what it is right now, what it could become to be comparable to what Game Pass is. Um, But yeah, I I see what you're saying, Malik. I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, by me, do you want to get onto the main course of this state of play? Okay, I'm, I'm all right. I'll I'm so excited. On. I'll move on. So yes, like they said, a lot of this um, state of play is going to be Ratchet and Clank, and literally, I think we got like 16 minutes, just over 16 minutes of Ratchet and Clank just r- rift apart, just nonstop action. Yep. Like I was yeah. so <laughs> surprised how much we saw of this game. I didn't expect a deep dive like this at all. Um, mm-hmm. We learned more about this story and more about Rivet, uh, that new character that's kind of like Ratchet's doppelganger, female doppelganger with a really cool Mega Man-esque arm. I, I'm yeah. looking forward to like attachments as you kind of explore this world and how her arm could kind of be used as um, different weapons or gadgets throughout the game. Um, we also got to look at just... Can we just talk about the power of that SSD and the yeah. lighting in that yeah. in that game? Incredible. The reflections on those puzzles. Uh, sorry, the puddles. I could not mm-hmm. um, look away at all. 
It was so beautiful. And the depth of that world, I was really shocked at how far, um, you know, because you kind of see like the stage where Ratchet is and then you kind of go through, which is regular for a Ratchet and Clank. There's usually not like it's sandbox in a sense, but then they usually have these little avenues you could go and explore. Yeah, um, right. But I wasn't expecting how large this cyberpunk, this other dimension um, that Rivet lives in, how large it is and how far you could actually travel within it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes it seem like you're you're traveling from like these self-contained areas, but at the same time existing in this open, breathing world. It, yeah, w- watching this video, if you ever needed an example to show <laughs> how smart that investment and acquisition of Insomniac Games was, yeah. this is it. Yeah, in mm-hmm. 16 minutes, Sony was just like, "Yeah, this was the best thing we've ever done for our business." Is <laughs> yeah. acquiring the studio because I just don't understand how they could do this. And how they can make a movie that looks like a Pixar movie that's yeah. playable. Yeah. 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 You, that's exactly I, I, I also, t- to your point, Camille, I think now, like, especially with the technology that we got out of these new consoles, we're going to see more often that line- games that are that are meant to be linear, that aren't necessarily open world, are going to play around with more like open spaces, mm-hmm. in, even in their linear environments, even though you're trying to get from point A to point B within your mission, there's going to be a lot more to explore, a lot more like crevices and corners to check out, to find collectibles in, you know, and, I, and I'm really excited about that because, again, not every game we've talked about this previously on an episode in that not every game needs to be open world because Mm -hmm. there's always like there's always something that comes with that there's always a um, an expectation there so i don't mind that games stay to be linear like ratchet and clank looks like it is that type of game where you're just getting from point a to point b with each each mission but these areas look so vast and so open and so explorable and I love that. I mean, even something like Halo, we got a glimpse of that as well. When we saw that demo way back when that had that same sort of vibe that I can just kind of go wherever I want to go. Of course, I have a set objective, but let me just have a little fun and see what's going on in the Halo ring until I get there. And you can kind of do that as well here with Ratchet and Clank. I'm super excited about it. Like, I'm just looking at the like the B-roll we're playing right now. Yeah. When he jumped over, I was like, okay, yeah, cool. But we're not going to be able to go that far. And then he goes further. And I'm just like, yeah, that is just amazing to me, because firstly, this is like a cyberpunk cross Ratchet and Clank game uh, with Rift Apart, because you're dealing with Rivet, who's from like this dimension where um, Nefarious is kind of like the emperor. Nefarious City is where this takes place. Um, so it's like darker than what we're used to for Ratchet and Clank. And I kind of like that contrast uh, between the two games I played. I remember the first time I played Ratchet and Clank um, and remember the commercials with like the chicken gun oh, and yeah. everything like yeah. that. Like yep. it's such a part of, I think a lot of people's childhood yep. that even if you kind of fell off the the wagon of Ratchet and Clank over the years, um, like when they went with Quark as another play, uh, that, was, <laughs> that was horrible. That was but, a dark time. Oh, that no. was a dark time. But this makes me want to get back into to the franchise because it's just so it's so beautiful um, that it surprised me. I do want to talk a little bit more about what they announced in the state of play with Ratchet mm-hmm. and Clank. So yeah. we got another look at that uh, Rift Tether, which is a move that uh, Ratchet does to kind of pull into another dimension. And that's kind of like the main feature that everyone's been looking forward to with this game, because it seems like you're loading into a completely another world without any loading screens, like in almost instantaneously. Now, how they animated it was really cool for me because you pull like this tether and you pull into that dimension. So it kind yeah. of sweeps oh, over so the cool. level. So I thought that's so I am clever. Obsessed. I am obsessed with that effect. Like it's so cool. And at the same time, you can tell that as soon as the animation uh, starts, that's the loading time. Yes. Yeah. Because it's the same yeah. animation every single time that I notice mm-hmm. in that trailer. So in that small like one to two second span yeah. that's loading the next area which, yeah, so which i think crazy. is just that's insane next We've level never had that in gaming before like mm-hmm. to instantaneously yeah. load worlds that are as gorgeous and, and like you said camille as open-ended as these as these are like that's incredible it just speaks to like the leaps and bounds that the playstation 5 has made and i know and that's what i keep thinking of too sorry go ahead camille. no go, go ahead. ahead go yeah. ahead i was just gonna say that's what i keep thinking about too is like this is just like one small step, you know, yeah. for what the PlayStation 5 is going to be capable of. I even think of like 
what the next Spider-Man game could be. They could really up the speed of these characters because a lot more can be rendered in at a time. Mm-hmm. You could be flying around the map with maybe like, if, let's say in Spider-Man 2, you get like the symbiote for Peter and you're just like doing crazy tricks and like really boosting yourself through the city. Like so much could be rendering in at a time and it just be like, it could be like a ton of fun. Like I'm, I'm thinking of how much potential is here and I feel like we're really only scratching the surface with Ratchet and Clank. But even then, scratching the surface, it's so impressive. It is, it is so impressive. impressive. Well, and even like we're, these we're trailers. finally arriving at next gen. Just yeah. your yeah. example with Spider-Man, like imagine, okay, tinfoil hat, imagine a <laughs> Spider-Man game completely separate from the second game where Madam Web shows up. You could go into different mm, dimensions. Yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, almost. In, oh, my God. That'd be so cool. I want to also talk about, you know, the the rift, the tether, the rift tether um, that pulls you into these different dimensions could also, mm. it's not like they're just used while you're walking through the level. No, you you could use them in battle. Like, that's the thing that's crazy to me, because if you know a Ratchet and Clank game, when you are in battle, there is a lot that is going on on the screen. Yeah. Um, so to be able to handle that plus to transport you to these different dimensions um, throughout your battle as you choose is just mind blowing to me. It's crazy mm-hmm. that they're able to process all of this. Um, again, they did talk about uh, more features of the game. So we're gonna be getting um, obviously those little um, open world segments within Ratchet mm-hmm. and Clank. We're gonna be getting Clank puzzles as well as glitch combat, arena challenges, aerial combat, and of course, it would not be insomniac if we did not get a photo mode which yes. i mean yes that's going to be amazing <laughs> yeah it does. <laughs> makes sense that's uh that's that was my all time favorite thing from Damn. watching the state of play was that yep. we're getting a photo mode and like i've had a blast with photo mode photo mode has been for me just without a doubt the best feature that's come to games yeah. in recent memory Agreed. um and i've had so much fun with it of course like ghost tsushima comes to mind mm-hmm. i literally I think like half my playtime in Ghost of Tsushima is just sitting there. Camille, you know this, coming to my stream sometimes, <laughs> literally seeing me sitting there lining up like the perfect photo. Yeah, he doesn't care if he's know, alone or minutes. like a bunch of people are watching. He is taking his time. With exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I take I take my time. I make sure I line it up perfectly. And I, I did that with Spider-Man as well. Mm-hmm. I did. I do that with like pretty much every game that I've been playing that has that feature. And I love how much more advanced it's gotten, how much more care has been put into that feature. Um, Miles Morales did it really well, and I can't wait to see kind of what improvements they made to it with uh, with Ratchet and Clank, because that's just going to get me more excited for the next Spider-Man game. Yeah, they're also um, talking about um, to help, obviously, with accessibility. There's going to be different options that they gave us a sneak peek of. Um, So whether it's like uh, making certain things one color so they kind of stand out to you or the game speed to kind of slow that down or, you know, speed that up if you need it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's really cool that, you know, I think this really did start with The Last of Us and how... Yeah. Um, expansive the options were to make the game more accessible. Um, now we're seeing that with more games, and I really do like that um, as well. I'm pretty sure you guys feel the same. Um, I want yeah. I want to talk about their. There's this move that Ratchet does that for me. Oh my god, this looks so amazing. I'm just looking at the yeah. girl as yeah, I know that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this one move that Ratchet does, and I'm kind of iffy about it, um, where he kind of dashes. And it's like a oh, mirror. Like the yeah. phasing. That that was, I like it. That it's, you like it's it. A little trippy. Yeah. It's it's it was very trippy for me at those parts when I was watching the trailer. I wasn't getting motion sickness, but I was kind of like, oh, it threw my eyes off. So I feel like I'm gonna have to adjust to that when I'm playing this one. I agree. That's yeah, the one yeah. thing where like it doesn't like bother me per se. Um, like, and I also understand kind of like the lore behind the the move right it's like he's literally like traveling through time or something like that right right so i think that that's cool don't get me wrong um but it's still just like it's it's a bit of an eyesore like it's something where like i'm so focused in on it where like if i was in combat or if i'm in a boss battle it almost like takes my attention away Mm -hmm. from what's in front of me sure and and puts my focus on the foreground so I don't know. I don't I don't hate it or anything. It'll probably just just like Camille said, be one of those things like my eyes have to adjust to. 
Yeah, I think we're so used to games like offering that like pixel perfect experience where even like the slightest dip in frame rate, you're like, I noticed that. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But like, we're so spoiled with some games. So like the phasing is inherently something we're not used to. So I do think that there's going to be uh, some adjustment, but I just love the style of it. I, th- I I think that they represent that like movement and showcasing someone phasing, which is not something you can easily do uh, in media is to represent that but i i thought they nailed it and um, i like it personally same here Fair enough same here yeah. um so anything and of course obviously with ratchet and clank rift apart this is built for the playstation 5 so you're going to expect adaptive triggers haptic feedback mm-hmm. um to its full potential i really feel so I'm really hyped for this game. There wasn't anything, like I know some people were looking at the state of play and they're like, oh, that's a lot of Ratchet and Clank, but there was no point in that gameplay where I was bored or I was tired right. of watching this. Like it just got me more excited for the game and really I cannot wait till it releases because it just needs to release right now, not on June 11th. If you could make that yes, happen please, in some yeah. Mac and PlayStation, <laughs> that would be awesome. So call them uh, like, yeah. we just get it now that'd be great yeah. exactly if they, can, if they can just like ship out some playstation 5s too before that happens <laughs> so like, true okay, so I get my yeah. Hands on one. <laughs> yeah that that'd be cool too that'd be cool too um yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> now the state of play of course happened and we were just going to talk about that but today playstation also put out this new uh news about their partnership with discord and we've yeah. talked about discord and what this means for gaming as a community but also for console gamers and getting that integration that's more fluid and it looks like this partnership between playstation and discord is going to deliver on that um they're hoping to work with discord to bring a goal that will make the Discord and PlayStation experience closer on console and on mobile um, starting yeah. early next year. Yeah. This means uh, allowing your friends, groups, and communities to obviously converse, have fun, and communicate while we play games. How do you guys feel about this news? Um, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're all agreeing this is the right move for PlayStation. Yeah, yeah What absolutely. do we think this is going to look like? This is uh, this is huge. Honestly, this is I don't think I mean, I, some people do, but there are some people who don't really see kind of how massive this is mm. for PlayStation in terms of a get because this opens up the door. Listen, Xbox already has implemented some of these features, which is why, to be honest, I think it's PlayStation that really needed this. Um, but Xbox has already got a good party system. Xbox has their community tab, right? Like you can, you have like that whole LFG system already kind of implemented into Xbox's like ecosystem. So that's something that's there and available. Um, but granted, not with the name and kind of the weight that's carried through Discord. But now PlayStation can play around with that. Now PlayStation can have a little more fun. People can join up or create Discord groups that are specific for like Destiny on PlayStation or that are specific, mm-hmm. you know, for people who like Ratchet and Clank or something like that. There's just so much room for uh, for Discord's implementation here. And as well, the most important thing is that they'll have like a properly functioning actually well working party chat system finally oh my Discord. god <laughs> for the Thank last god. 10 years playstation's voice <laughs> chat has just been the joke of the gaming community it's been a struggle it's been a struggle the only times i remember ever having my mic on or hearing people with their mic on when i'm playing Games is somebody not realizing that they do and blasting music through it okay yeah. that's all i remember my experience being in party chats or in game chats on playstation so i'm glad that they're getting their partnership with discord for that reason but as well like i said you know the functionality that you get out of discord with creating servers and being in these groups and communities of people for certain games or just things you like you know or even just creating a discord server with your friends for whatever game you guys play on the regular, for people maybe who play Call of Duty, who play Warzone, that kind of stuff. There's so much potential here. This is a huge, huge deal. And you mentioned and I think Sorry. the message coming specifically from PlayStation, like they released a, a blog post on this uh, earlier today and everything. It read to me like it was an extremely humbling message because one of the things that the PlayStation 5 offers is this like revitalized party system, messaging system and all that. So for them to come out less than half a year and say we're partnering with Discord to make it even better, yeah, kind of shows to me that, you know, they are listening and understand the fact that, you know, it came out, the PlayStation 5 came out and people had mixed reactions 
to the right. changes and it wasn't just up to snuff with what they were expecting mm -hmm. especially when compared to something like discord proper or xbox and its party chat and everything there's work to to be done there so yeah i'm i'm very hopeful i think this is a great move you know we were talking about the possibility of microsoft acquiring discord and what that would mean and everything yeah at the end of the day i'm just happy discord is coming to consoles that's yeah that's really like the end game for me is just to get it wherever it's possible so if it's on playstation uh in the next year or so that's that's got me optimistic that it can come to other platforms but mm -hmm. for the time being let's, let's see what it does for playstation and I feel like yeah. this is a necessity as well. Sorry, Malik. Um, I just wanted to add into that um, that before, like I think for all of us growing up, although yes, we would use party chat sometimes and it was kind of horrible. We usually relied on the in-game chat system mm -hmm. um, just because we were usually playing with games that had, or sorry, friends that had the same consoles we did. Um, now as crossplay is becoming pretty much basic um that every game yeah. is uh, essentially coming with crossplay and now that we're seeing pc games like among us coming into the fold on console this just makes mm -hmm. sense this is where console gaming needs to go and discord really is going to be hopefully that outlet that kind of leads the way for consoles to get to a place where when we're playing crossplay we have that great communication as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely I mean, Camille, you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, that's just like exactly it, is that like we need that bridge between PlayStation and other games. Because even like you mentioned, Caboose, even if you're on Xbox and then you have friends on PC, you can still open up the Microsoft or the Xbox gaming app and, and yeah. hop in a, in a party there. You yeah. can't do that between PlayStation uh, and PC. Because like right. I play No Man's Sky with one of my best friends and he's on PS4 and I'm on PC. And we use a Discord uh, on our phones just to talk. And, and it's so janky because then you got you know if you're wearing your headphones while you're playing you gotta yep. put earbuds in it this is just gonna remove so many of these issues yeah. i didn't even think of that and you're absolutely right like I, I and there have been instances myself where like if i'm playing games with my friends and they're on uh they're on their xbox or i'm on my pc or just in general it's easier for me to be joining the party chat through my pc i can do that through the companion app that's on my desktop. So there's nothing like that for PlayStation. And now finally, it seems like they're going to have an equivalent. And I mean, maybe even something that's better mm -hmm. than what Xbox has. Cause to be honest, that companion app needs work. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. needs work. <laughs> it's got some issues, but I am, I'm just, I'm excited. And so from my understanding as well, this is happening and being officially implemented next year. Early, Early next year. year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we still got a bit of a ways away, yeah. but it's good that they've announced it now because they're probably going to put quite a bit of work into it and making sure that it runs properly, that it works properly in time for uh, early 2022. I'm I'm intrigued to see, too, if, if they start adding Discord benefits to like PlayStation Plus, because if they can work something out with Twitch already in Discord, you can use emotes if you're subscribed and you have your Discord and Twitch linked. But if they if they do something where they can integrate Twitch, they've got Discord, and then they you know have this revitalized party function like you were saying with the PlayStation Five. I think they're really going to mm -hmm. start helping build communities. Mm -hmm. You bring up mm -hmm. a good point though, like having um, some sort of exclusivity. I feel like console, the console world has always been built on what's exclusive to that console. Why will I want right. to play on that console? The one thing I don't want, which could be a possibility, if Discord has this partnership with PlayStation, and I hope obviously they'll be offered still on Microsoft, but I'm hoping that partnership isn't tarnished to the point where things become exclusive only on yeah. the PlayStation in terms of how you are communicating with your friends or char uh, party chats, right? Like yeah. maybe, okay, certain emotes, um, I could get that. Like if you have a Ratchet and Clank emo or something like that, that that's kind of cool. Um, but the basic functionalities um, that you should be able to do on Discord um, and hopefully they're bringing to console, I hope mm -hmm. that going on both sides not just one yeah i don't think see and i don't think that they'll do anything that's like gate kept like that i think it's just a matter of making their own communities better like enriching their own communities mm -hmm. um and just really connecting people on a bigger level because playstation hasn't really had the opportunity to do that because i mean f for the last console generation they're playing the the bad guy the big boy on top you know they didn't need to play nice with anyone because uh, they were killing it and now i think that they're starting to 
come back on that hubris because we've seen PlayStation get high on their own hubris before. They're yeah. starting to take a step back and they're like, okay, let's let's do some fan service. Uh, let's try to bring our communities together and really patch up some of these you know gaps that we've had for a long time. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, well, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, early next year, we'll be watching uh, and playing on Discord, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>